You ready, bees? So you can actually see like a lot of them that are coming back, you'll see their back legs are kind of packed with pollen. Uh -huh. So they, they, they have these, um, they're called pollen baskets, but it's how they store the pollen when they collect it. And, and it just makes, it almost looks like these big round footballs. Um, and then of course they're also going out and gathering nectar and, and bringing that back to make the honey as well. I mean, they just, they work themselves to death basically. So they're, they're constantly dying, and then the, the undertaking bees will, anytime there's any that die in the hive, they're the ones that'll carry them out. So these bees down here were brought out of there yes. by other bees? by other bees, yep, That's to keep the inside of the hive clean. Because the inside of the hive is actually probably one of the cleanest places that you can find in nature. And a lot of that has to do with the antibacterial and antimicrobial properties of the propolis and the wax and So that's just breaking the glue, the propolis loose so that when I do go to pull it out or lift it off it's not going to Now that's what you don't want to do. Yeah. But if it happens, you just back up for a second. Yeah. Let them calm back down. Yeah, you could hear them like, hey. yeah. <laughs> Squish they've drawn out a lot more there, and that's all nectar that they're storing there right now, which will eventually become honey. Squish, honey. So this top box we just added um, two weeks ago, and as of last week, they really hadn't done oh, no. much with it. But cup? now they've... Is that a queen's cup? Nate, you can't talk over me, buddy. But now they've actually, they've been hitting these frames pretty good. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot. Daddy. No, it's just burr comb, buddy. So what, are you just about removing that from the... I'm just getting it off of there. And the idea there, the only reason we don't want that on there is because eventually the wax will harden a little bit and as it hardens up, it makes it more difficult to get the frames out. Plus they'll keep building onto it mm -hmm. if we let them and get all the top frames glued to the bottom frames. Do with that once you take it so what I'm going to do because this actually has you can see there's not much but there's a little bit of honey in there and you can see they're already starting to pull it out mm -hmm. so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it and set it over here in front of the hive and they'll clean all that honey out bring it back into the hive store it in cells and then once that's empty, then I can just collect that and keep a big ball of wax. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I finished. I think yeah. I got distracted. Uh, so yeah, the initial box when you order, it, what we ordered was a three pound package. So that's typically that's about 10 to 13,000 bees. Um, by now, there's certainly a lot more than that in here. I, I really, I mean, if I had to take a guess, 
when they're all in the hive at this point, there's probably about 30 to 35,000. Within another, within a month, it'll probably be up to about 60 to 65,000. Now, how do they, is that from reproduction or do just other bees come in? That's, when we get into this lower box, um, we'll see where, where the queen, but that's, that's all about the queen. The queen lays on average about 1,500 eggs a day. Every 30 seconds, she's laying an egg. So again, typically about every 30 seconds, you've got a new bee coming out in the hive. You know, like even where they're here, I mean, you can, you can touch them and they'll kind of move out of the way. They'll give you some space. Like if there's a certain spot of the frame that you're trying to get a good look at, they'll get out of there. Hey, if you don't mind, can you move one more, just one more time? Sure. I'm gonna get in close. But yeah, basically as, as the hive grows and as it expands, they'll draw out more comb because they need more room for brood to store honey, pollen, that kind of stuff. And then eventually what will happen is once they've filled up these two frames, I'll put something, it, it's, called a, it's called a queen excluder. Basically it has slots in it that are big enough for the workers to get through but not big enough for the queen to get through. And then on top of that, we'll put another box and that'll be the honey super. And anything that they store in there is basically honey that we can take off because when it gets closer to winter, they'll move the brood chamber, like all the brood will stay in the bottom box. This box will be full of nothing but honey. And at that point, that'll be about 60 to 65 pounds of honey. And that's pretty much what they need to get through the winter. So right away, you can see the difference when we open the top here and the bees that were on the top of the frames versus here, you can see there's a lot more. So right there, if you can see her, the, red, the, red. the one with the red dot, that's our queen. So she's over here where these, where they're just drawing out this comb and looking for places to lay eggs. And let's see. Why does she have that red spot? I mean, is that just... Um, so the the mark itself is paint. Um, oh, I actually okay. put that on when when we received her. She was just a normal bee, other than, I mean, she was easily d identifiable because of the long the elongated sure. abdomen. Um, but the the paint you use a, a paint marker to okay. to mark it, um, and that makes it easier to spot her when she's on the frame, that's how before we ever even pulled this frame out, I was able to see that she was on this frame. And then the color of the paint, you use different colors for different, the, the last digit of the year. So by that being red, I know that she was installed in this hive in 2018. So two years from now, if it comes time, like if she's slowing down or just starting to slow down, I'll know that she's the original queen and it might be time to replace her with, with one that's going to be a little more active. Nice. Right in here, you can see like this cell right here that my pinky is below. Mm -hmm. See that little thing that looks like a little miniature grain of rice? Mm -hmm. That's an egg. And there's one there, there's one there. So that's eggs that she's been laying. And then above that, you can see the little 
They look like kind of a curled up worm. That's the larva. So the little tiny green things, that's the eggs. The little worm things are the larva. And then over here, where there's some out of the way, where all of this is sealed up, uh -huh. that's capped brood. So once the larva reach five days old, then they'll actually cap it over. Uh -huh. And then that's the capped brood. And then it takes 21 days total from the time the egg's laid till the time that an adult, well, a young bee emerges from the cell. And then this is all honey. The white stuff? Mm-hmm. <laughs> This was all capped like this, but all these cells are where bees have actually emerged. And if you look in the bottom, almost all of these cells have eggs in the bottom. Uh-huh. You can actually see a few cells where they're starting to pack some pollen. So when they're coming in with those pollen baskets, those mm -hmm. big things on the back of their legs full of pollen, then that's eventually what ends up happening to it. They pack it into those cells. So they bring the pollen in, pack mm -hmm. it in, and, what, what, it, what happens and it? essentially it ferments. Um, so what they do, because the pollen, when it comes straight off out of the flowers or blooms, um, it's, a, it's a little bit I guess too hard for them to digest. So when they pack it in, basically what they'll do is they'll kind of ferment it uh, or let it ferment and that softens it up and makes it more digestible for them. So that's, and the pollen itself, um, the, the larvae that we were looking at earlier, until they're capped off, the first three days that they're, that the lar once the egg becomes a larva, the first three days then they'll be fed royal jelly, which is a special substance that's secreted from glands in the nurse bees' heads. After that three days, then they're switched over and they'll, they'll, be, fed bee, bee, bleh, they'll be fed bee bread and honey, a mixture of the two. This just seems like there's, there's so much to this and so much to bees. I mean, oh, absolutely. I don't say complicated, but it's complex. Right. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, there's there's so many different in the hive itself. There's so many different jobs that each of the bees have. I mean, there's bees that are responsible for building out the comb, that are you know capping the honey and capping the brood. Um, <clears throat> there's bees that are carrying out the dead. There's bees that are cleaning up the cells and getting them prepared for the queen to lay. You know, there's bees that are that are fanning. Um, you know, they, they actually have basically their own HVAC system. They'll, they'll set up bees at the entrance that fan air into the hive, and then they'll set up at all different places throughout the hive, and they'll just stand there and fan their wings and, and make it so that it moves the air through the hive exactly the way that it needs to get it at the exact temperature that they need especially the brood, because the brood needs to stay at a, at a particular temperature. Mm -hmm. So there you can actually see there's a lot of pollen in this And they keep that, the, again, the bee bread is what it's called. They keep that near the brood that's hatching, or that's the eggs that are hatching into larva and will become brood because, again, that's what they eat.
Now, the bees that I'm looking at right now, what, what is their job? What are they doing? Uh, most of what you're seeing there are going to be nurse bees. So basically, they're the ones that are tending to the larva. Um, they're checking on the brood. They're the ones who, you know, every, every cell that you see a larva in, um, in one day, there's, a, there's nurse bees will check in on that single larva up to about 1,300 times. So whether that's feeding it or just checking on it and making sure it's okay or whatever. Um, so that's most of what you're seeing are the nurse bees that are taking care of, of the brood. Basically just a, a feeder. So there's kind of a cage that goes down through each one of those holes. And it goes down, um, and I've been trying to keep sugar syrup in there. And all that does is that, that just, it helps them to build out, um, mm -hmm. you know, they consume a lot of sugar syrup to make the wax and to make the comb. Um, normally they would consume the honey, but by having the sugar syrup, they can mm -hmm. use that. And basically that just, it kind of gives them a jump start and makes it easier for them to be able to draw out the comb and, and do it quicker than they would be otherwise. So they like that stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> of this and they've actually gotten all the honey and everything out of it. <laughs> and, um, ultimately I mean you're gonna I guess you're gonna get some honey out of here for yourself. I mean what, what's uh... yeah I, I don't know uh, again I mean right now they're doing really really well. I don't know how much honey um, we'll get off this year. Typically you don't really expect much if any in the first year that, mm -hmm. that they're establishing because they're building up and they're having to, to do so mm -hmm. much to build up. Next year they'll definitely produce a lot of honey. Gotcha. Um, but as far as this year again, it, it's very possible. Um, it just kind of depends on the weather and what they do and, mm -hmm. and how they do. Now, I mean, uh, you know quite a bit about bees it sounds like. What, how important are bees to, I mean, to have around? I mean, what's What's the significance of them? Um, I mean, obviously, they're they're really important as far as um, you know a lot of the crops, the the foods that we eat. Um, you know, yes, some of the crops and some of the things um, can be you know pollinated in other ways. Um, in fact, some even through just you know wind happen to blow pollen in the right direction or whatever. Um, but the reality is, you know, crops do much much better when there's bees around, mm -hmm. which is why, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, of commercial value and, and commercial beekeepers that that's, you know, they don't care about honey. They don't care about, they just, they move colonies of hives near fields and agricultural areas just to, to do the pollination mm -hmm. because it increases the output of the crop so much. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, even for a guy like me that really doesn't you know, I'm not real fond of a lot of vegetables, um, but, you know, even, even you know, cattle or, or things like that, you know, there's, there's the, the, like, alfalfa and, and the things that they eat, that if it wasn't for that and, and large crops of those, we wouldn't have them either, so. Yeah, I think uh, you, you read about or hear about if, if there aren't bees around, it, it, it could be a problem. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It would, it would be, uh, I think, devastating to our to our food supply and, and the environment in general.